All right, quickly here before I start her up. Um, this is my second solo, if you will. Um, been looking forward to this day for a while. I think I've been ready for this day for a little while, but I just wanted to get absolutely 100% comfortable, like I've mentioned in other videos. I'm not going to get into uh, too much detail here. I just uh, one thing I did do is add a um, an iPad mini mount that I'm hoping is going to work out. Um, if not, I have a standby um, lap lap strap. Uh, but I'm hoping uh, this works out because now I can write and still have the foreflight here. And um, I that's about it. I'm going to have a lot of uh, commentary on the back end of this video basically summing up the whole experience of getting uh, current again for a very rusty pilot who hadn't flown in a long time. So without further ado, here I go and wish me luck. Pre-flight inspection is complete. Passenger crew and briefing, not a factor right now. Seatbelts on. Parking brake is off. Clear prop.
course right here. I'm sorry, it's cold. Back some power. Nope. Uh, 469 and one able to park. Okay, cool. 469 from right out for ground point six. Vehicle approach, that's the 16237. Yeah, 
Dew point minus zero nine -er Celsius. Altimeter three zero one two. Remarks. Density altitude minus one thousand six hundred. Suffolk County Airport, West Hampton Beach, New York. Automated weather observation. One two one three nine four. Traffic's a mile south. New eastbound indicates three thousand five hundred. Look for the traffic. Uh, Cessna three nine. Uh, sorry, three nine four. Number nine three hotel Foxtrot climb and maintain two thousand. Two thousand for nine three hotel Foxtrot. Right. For eight two zero Juliet Alpha descent and maintain two thousand. Turn right inning one four zero. Two thousand down one four zero zero Juliet Alpha. Mixtures 
French seat belts. Ning light. Oriented to four is right here.
touch and go 237, and I'm going to depart to the north. How would you like me to do that? All right, turn. All right, right turn, 237. Tower, uh, Diamond Star, 154, Delta Sierra, clear of uh, Delta Airspace. Diamond Star, 4, Delta Sierra, have a good day. Good day.
get my altitude bug in here for 3,000 feet and get to that. Some power back. Out of the 
Okay, so this is going to be basically my summary of my experience getting back to Curran again. Um, I meant to do this summary right after my last flight, which you just saw, um, the my first solo back. It's been a lot more time that's passed since since then, so I apologize for that. But nonetheless, I want to finish the series up and get this posted. Um, it's been so long that we are now in this uh, whole coronavirus crisis, so I'm wishing everybody safety, health uh, for you and your loved ones. I, I hope as few of you are affected by this as possible, and um, we're all in this together, so be safe and um, take care of yourselves. Most importantly, we'll get through this. Okay, so... Um, some of the things I wanted to talk about were, um, I have some notes here, I apologize. Um, some initial, my initial steps getting back at it was very important. I, I put this off for years. Year after year, I kept saying, I'm gonna do it this year, I'm gonna do it this year. Then I, then I got an injury, that was a legitimate reason to postpone. I finally had to just put pressure on myself. I walked into the flight school and told them what I was interested in doing and just that alone got me going I, I said it it came out of my mouth <laughs> and it put an expectation on myself at that point and yeah I had to put some pressure on myself to get going um, so take those first steps if it's, especially if it's been a long time like 15 16 17 years something like that or even 10 years um, find a flight school find an instructor um, if you don't know where to start look for some local flying clubs um, there's always going to be congregations of pilots uh, going to different clubs go talk to them they're there for you they're going to want to help you as you know aviation is a very sharing community so you'll get that support you need and just talking to those pilots will help you out a lot um, oh yeah and see if there's any safety seminars in the area as well um, that'll probably be a great place to uh, to find some of these types of folks Okay, so um, make, make some decisions early on. Um, if you left off flying a steam gauge aircraft, which is a good chance you did, I would suggest going back to a steam gauge initially, at least for the first few lessons. Um, that's what I did. I think that was a great move on my part. I, I didn't know how good of a move it was at the time, but you're going to... Uh, you're just going to feel more comfortable quicker, and you're, you're less likely to to stop flying if you go into a glass cockpit and you've never been in one before and you're coming you know off of a 10 year break 10 year or more break it's going to overwhelm you so definitely go back into the steam gauge maybe you just want to stay in steam gauge at that point it depends on what you have in mind for when you get back into your currency um i personally uh was planning to get an instrument rating after i, I told myself if i do this i want to go for an instrument rating uh, to make myself a uh, safer pilot. Um, spoiler alert, I actually got the rating. That's how much longer this video is being shot than the flight you just saw. Um, and uh, yeah, so so do that. And I will tell you, if you are interested in an instrument rating, um, I would try to transition it to a glass uh, G1000 or you know some similar um, glass cockpit Avidyne or whatever it is that the aircraft you're gonna be flying has. Uh, the the amount of situational awareness that you get out of a glass cockpit is is amazing. Once you get to once you get comfortable with it, t there's a learning curve there. Be patient with it. Um, what would I have done a little differently? Uh, I think when I first got back in the cockpit, what I could have done better uh, was maybe relying a little less on Sebastian for everything. I mean, and of course it was everything was kind of new again. But try to wean yourself off of the instructor's help um, when it comes to changing frequencies, uh, just doing various tasks. I mean, he's going, he or she are going to want to help you, of course, but try your best to um, minimize that at, over time. Don't, don't rely on them too much, so then you'll make that transition a little bit quicker. Um, uh, spacing your lessons, you should definitely, just like in primary flight school and primary training, if you space your lessons out a week or two weeks apart, you're, you're, it's going to take you a lot longer to get to the to the goal. Same with getting current again. If you could do 
two, three flights a week. I know it's not in everybody's, you know, capability with their schedules, but if you could do that, or at least schedule two or three a week, you know, with weather, you're gonna miss lessons, you're gonna get back at it much quicker. I mean, if you do if you do three a week, you could probably get back at it, you know, be current on your own in a couple of weeks, easily. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, some other things to consider uh, for flight. When I left off many years ago, for flight, uh, well, first of all, there was no iPad, never mind for flight. Um, I, depending again on your stage of wh where you are in life and you know what you want to do with your flying, for flight is a beautiful program on the iPad. Um, I'm sure most of you who are watching this video know what for flight is, but you know, it's just, it's got. It's very intuitive, it's very easy to use. Um, you talk about situational, even with the glass cockpit, having this additionally f for flight planning, weather, it's just all at your fingertips and very easy to use. Um, so I would suggest going with Four Flight with a, and an iPad mini makes a great um, you know, size as far as in, the, in a cockpit. One thing I found was I tried I tried it on my leg. I tried it mounted on the side screen, a side window. I ultimately came up with uh, I didn't come up with it. I actually from watching some videos, I came up with um, what worked for me was a um, a yoke mount. It goes right on the yoke, easily fits in. And this is a um, a ram mount. This with the short arm and the uh, this goes on the on the collar of the steering control of the yoke of the yoke um, column and I, f I find that's the best um, again you got to do it you got to try different things of what works for you uh, checklists um, so checklists you know think about your checklist uh, you're gonna get in checklists are very important to be comfortable with it's something you want to not have to think a lot about um, when I first got back in the cockpit um, Basically, the flight school had one of these. I mean, the whole thing is on one piece. What's nice about it is it's just on one thing, but it's not that detailed, and I wanted more detail on my checklist. So then I got this uh, booklet-style one that I was using for for many of the flights, and it, it worked pretty well. Um, I think this is my second favorite, but what I ultimately ended up with is making my... Um, I had a Word document template that I got from... My, the flight school that I transitioned to and um, basically I ended up with these that I made um, basically long style Lam I laminated them what I, I like most about these is you can just stick them in the, the pocket and, uh, right next to you in the aircraft and they stick out so they're easy to grab they're laminated so you can grab them easily and um, I ended up liking this but what I do suggest is try to come up with something that works for you and do it try to get it have it early in the process so that you can get very comfortable with your checklist so you're not like fumbling with that checklist and um, get comfortable with your checklist ultimately um, and also just organizing the cockpit try to come up with a, what works for you as far as cockpit organization I tried various things um, what I uh, I tried different, a couple of different knee boards. What I un ultimately ended up with was the most basic of the knee boards, just a metal knee board. Um, I'm a lefty. I put it on the left side. It's a little annoying because the side of the plane gets in the way. So I kind of transitioned over to the right. It's a little awkward when you're flying because you're kind of cross controlled. But um, when I went on to my instrument rating, I had to get more comfortable with this. Um, Let's see. Um, I talked about the mount. Oh, and then with the uh, with regard to the iPad, um, one thing that makes the iPad a lot more useful is getting an ADS-B receiver. Um, this is one I went with, a Sentry. Um, it's made by. It's it's provided through ForeFlight. Um, they, it's theirs. There's the Stratus. It's a, this is a little less money than the Stratus. It works very well for me. It's got good good battery life. It's also even got a built-in carbon monoxide detector. It mounts right onto the uh, anywhere. <laughs> and you get, you know, AHARS with this. You get very, very precise GPS. And you get all the ADS-B stuff, the weather, the, pre the pre precise, um, well, you get um, aircraft. You see where the air other aircraft are on your four-flight map. It's amazing. Um, 
then I just wanted to talk about documenting with cameras. I mean, I, I'm happy I did. One thing I could have done better is use the video that I recorded to kind of analyze more. I didn't like give myself enough time to go and review them. I know I cut videos for YouTube, but I didn't actually use them enough to like review. If you're not going to use them to review, then don't bother with them because they're just going to get in the way. And if you do want to use them, don't go crazy about having multiple cameras. I mean, um, if you're going to choose just one camera, I think the overhead looking forward camera would be the best. And the key is you definitely want to capture the audio so that you have the audio in the video. Um, oh yeah, um, do as uh, another suggestion I would say is do as much as you can at home when you when you're home. Listen to live ATC. You're going to be talking on radios again. Just listen to live ATC as uh, .net as often as you can. If you can get your actual airport on there, that's even better. But if not, listen to a similar, you know, if you have a class Delta airport, um, try to listen to a similar type of airport um, control tower. Um, and practice, practice, you know, while you're home. Just practice how you would respond to the controller, say it out loud. Um, these are all things you can do when you're not in the plane. By the same token, you could, um, if you have a decent powered computer, uh, most current computers can handle X-Plane, um, you know, to different level degrees of, you know, frame rate satisfaction. You know, you don't have to have X-Plane with all of the details, uh, sliders specced out to the furthest. It's not about that. It's more about getting to know the controls. Um, but I definitely suggest a flight simulator help you along. It worked. It helped me a lot. Um, and if you want to take it one step further, you could even en um, enroll with Pilot Edge, which is basically a, a service for about 20 bucks a month. And there's actually live air traffic controllers that talk to you. Um, and there's different missions you can do and ratings you can get within Pilot Edge. So that's something to look to look and look at. Um, books I found for stick and rudder skills, which is obviously the most important thing you could do is to get your stick and rudder skills polished up. Um, this was a book that was kind of highly suggested by a lot of people, Stick and Rudder. It's an old book from 1940 something I believe, but all of these principles still apply today. It's written by Wolfgang Langweish. Langweish. I found this followed by Rod Machado, who's one of my favorite CFIs out there, um, his How to Fly an Airplane uh, handbook. Um, I'll put that up on the video so you can see what that looks like. I thought this followed by Rod's book was a great combination in my own opinion. Of course, um, you go out and look on YouTube. There's so much information on YouTube out there to, to, to teach yourself. There's so many sharing pilots that have great videos. Um, real world stuff that you could follow along with. Radio communications. Um, and then what else could I say? Some closing thoughts. Um, yeah, uh, just just keep in mind that you know once you're signed off, you're not on your own. You can still fly on your own and then go back with an instructor to work on you know anything. Cross if you're not feeling comfortable with your crosswinds, go work with your instructor. Um, stalls, uh, slow flight, whatever, just whatever you want to work on. Keep working at it. Consider um, an instrument rating if you want to take everything to the next level. It was not an easy rating to get, but it's uh, super satisfying to accomplish that. Makes you a much more precise pilot. It just uh, takes you to another level. Um, ultimately, have fun. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just let the learning happen. You'll get there. Go at your own pace. And yeah, and that's about it. So from this point forward, I hope to have more flights now that I'll start documenting. Just, just you know, flights from Long Island here that. Um, will help everybody out just for fun to follow along and um, again stay safe and thank you for watching I appreciate it